thanks to you and JB and Alex and everyone else who's made this week possible. Um, and especially a shout out to you because with everything that's going on now, the fact that you've been able to pull this off and bring everyone together as a community to support each other is, is really, really wonderful. So Thank congratulations. You. Um, I'm here today with Kip Slemons and Karen Davidoff. Kip is an internationally recognized artist um, and jeweler with work in numerous uh, museum collections throughout the world. And Karen is the founder of the Jewelry Library, which is located right here in New York City. And we're going to be talking today about the exhibition Tag Your It, which is a group exhibition of, if we count KIF, 26 artists and friends. Um, and this show is also very much about community and connections. Now you can find it in the durational section of New York City Jewelry Week events. And we'll also be putting the link in the chat, okay? Um, and when you go there, there's a beautiful catalog, uh, e-catalog, which I encourage you to explore. Um, it will introduce you to all of the amazing artists, in the show and allow you to take a closer look at the work. Kif today is going to be able to give us a real life preview of some of the pieces. So we're going to start off by, I don't even see, there she is, okay. Start off by saying hello to Kif and asking her to tell us where she is right now in real time. Right now, I'm in a new studio for me. I'm just in the process of moving here from my previous studio downtown. And it's in a place that was recently opened in Chicago called Epiphany Center for the Arts. And I was offered a residency here in the, one of the artist studios. And Happily, it's across the street from where I live. So um, it's a great space. And Kat, who is my digital assistant at the moment, is here with me helping me today. And we just set up the studios completely empty, which you can maybe tell by the sound of my voice. We did put some things up on the wall to have in the background anyway, so. So Kif, you, um, so good to see you and it looks beautiful. Um, you know, you, this project started, uh, you brought 25 artists into it. Some were old friends, some uh, are new friends, some are jewelry colleagues. Can you tell us how the project came about? Many years ago, I think over 20 years ago, I did a series of pieces that were made with key tags. I had been working at the time in Mexico with paper, designing paper jewelry for a cooperative there. <clears throat> and at one moment, I wondered if I would ever do something combining paper and metal. And I happened to see one day at the bookstore a basket of key tags, paper key tags with metal rims. And I thought, well, there's paper and metal right there. And so I bought some packages of these tags. Then I ended up realizing they came in packages of 50 and that 100 would make 10 prints of each of my fingers. And with that, I could have an actual signature piece, a signed piece by me. Since I don't sign my work often to 
the distress of many people, but this would be an actual signed piece. And it was um, being humorous at the same time and also though re reflected my desire to play on words and the, the, the part that language pays, plays in my work and also the, the fact that my hands were literally present there. And so much of my work is concerned with um, the value of the hand and knowledge that comes through the hand and the, of things that are made by hand. So that began there, and but somehow I always knew I wanted to do more with the tags. And a couple of years ago, in my previous studio, I think during a snag conference, um, Pasha and Pasha Moisey and and Aurelie Guillaume visited the studio, and they were interested in some of the tags that were laying there. And I said that I had the idea to ask different people to work on the tags, to mark the tags in their way. So their energy and enthusiasm uh, caused me to give them the tags right away. But it was still a bit more time that passed before I really started to put it together in a more in a more organized way by inviting friends and other colleagues to do their version of the tags, partly out of somehow the atmosphere of the identity crisis many people were having. How do we identify ourselves? So I like that the, the key tags were meant to be, to identify something, to unlock something that was identified by the tag. And so in this way, the different people would be identified in a way by what they did with the tags. And these, not everyone was a jeweler. There were architects, potters, painters, and they all had a different approach to the tags. You said, um, you said some, of you, some of the jewelry colleagues of yours handled them differently than the painters and the and some of the more visual, you know, some of the uh, people in the visual arts. How, how did the jewelers deal with the tag project? I think with some of the people who were not jewelers, I said I would just give them the tags, removing the split rings that come with the tags, and then I would put them together once they gave me the tags. And that I, I pretty much ended up designing a, a specific way to use a hundred tags. The jewelers and certainly with Pasha and Aurelie, I didn't, they took the packages so they already had the rings. And I didn't, I didn't need to tell the jewelers how to design the use of the tag. So different things came to me that way. I do have this, this is, I don't know if you can see this well. You can. This is from Trina Elisgar, my good friend in Mexico, who is a wonderful textile artist. And she took a completely different approach from anyone else, but very much her. I quite love this piece. It's very minimal and direct and really sharp. What are you wearing? And this is one that I later learned, I think I know the entire 
industry of tag production available in the world. And so uh, this, these I discovered recently that are big tags. So this makes a pretty fun necklace, but um, it is, it's one that I made and it's spray painted and I knew that I wanted to spray paint some of them. But of course in Chicago, spray paint is illegal to be sold in the city limits. But I a little bit tried to talk the people at the paint store into didn't they have something that I really look like I was going to... <laughs> Hanging a building and they finally said, oh, are you painting outdoor furniture? And I said, yes, something for that. And they said, we have black and white. So all the things that I made using the spray paint had to be either black or white. And, and these tags were blue already, which was a a color I could deal with and then using the black and white. And so if when you touch that, mm -hmm. it's a great sound. And so many of them do. And that's something that we've talked about, that you've talked about in this exhibition, that it was important if you couldn't physically be there with people, that the sense of touch and connection and and different senses like sound was important to you. Can you talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Well, the sound is great that they make. Both wearing them and handling them. And if you think about rattles that are used for, for babies, <laughs> for dancing, um, the rattles serve a certain purpose, and some of the early tags that I made, I called rattle tags. But they, they keep you company, and they're good for dancing to wear. Right. So they're grateful. You, you, you talked about the earliest ones. I think uh, there are Two, at least two of them are in the exhibition. Are any of them in the studio there with you now? Yes, one of them is I don't I think I'll have to bring them over because that's great. Perfect. It is too hard to see the other one. So this is, go ahead, tell us about that. This is one that has square tags which they don't make anymore. I'm sure I bought all that were left, but this has my fingerprint. So this is one of the original ones. And it's a very cool sound with, I don't know, can you see these? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure I'm seeing this so small. Anyway, uh, so that was one of the early ones. And then another one that I don't have here is uh, with prints of keys. So since they were called key tags, this again shows my inclination to use language in some way. So someone had given me a chain of old keys that were wonderful shapes. So I laid the keys onto the tags and spray painted them black. That was one of the very first ones I did. So they look like <clears throat> negatives of keys. And you know, in that way, the language, even though these were much more mm, uh, playful pieces in the beginning and really uh, individual things that were more fun to make, I still thought in my usual ways of how to approach them. So often um, language comes first for me. I, I think of Toni Morrison who said that in writing, 
for her, images come first and then language. And I realize that often for me, language comes first and then, and then the image. Not always, but in, in a way that's what happened with the, with the keys. Um, some of the, you know, one of the reasons that we, uh, you talked about that this project would be great for this virtual New York City Jewelry Week is that the catalog, the book that you did for the show would be a way for people to access it. These, you know, the, to, to get a closer look at the images on the tag. Because mm -hmm. some of them, by some of the artists, are very detailed. You, I think you have a few to mm -hmm. show us. Um, some people, it was actually a hundred little paintings or collages. Or I think even Kat drew hers. Um, I don't know if it's there, but yes, yes. one of the artists, yeah. So okay. I think to so see the details. I'll show you now a few different ones. Yes. Yeah. Heated or, or drama. This, by the way, is cats, and I must. Here is cat, <laughs> and I must thank cat enormously for helping me with all this digital part of all of this, and also Jason Pickleman. I don't want to forget to thank because thanks to him, I I got to name the catalog that goes towards making the book. So with Kat, I hope it is. And then, Harry Terrell, who was having a major exhibition at the time. So he, I talked him into doing 15 or 20 tags. And his house, can you see that one? Yeah, mm -hmm. really well. Some wonderful drawings uh, on both sides. And this was also a little bit different to design because of fewer tags and how you could really see them. The most amazing of these is Curtis Steiner. His are really, he made 200 incredible miniature paintings. I hope you can see these. We can see, yes. And also we were noticing how Curtis's feel so different in the hand. There's something so refined about these that don't you think? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to describe, but they, you know, what, what you see is also what you feel when you're holding them and I'm sure wearing them. Curtis spent almost two months just on doing these tags. Mm. And he, he just wrote me recently that he decided on the title, which was, which is in the garden of time. So in a sense, he created a garden over this time of making the tags. Well, you know, we talked a lot about how this was really important for all the artists. They've been doing this for the last few months. Uh, we talked about why it was important for them to do it. They really, some people who were sort of reticent at first did a hundred tags and then came back to do another set. So it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a special moment. Um, I mean, it gave everyone a sort of focus it was, it did become a kind of collaborative project because you were all focusing on the same thing. And I think in our particular time that we're in right now, it was good to have this focus and uh, on something that was 
bright and not so dark as so much. This was bright news. <laughs> and, and I think that, well, I, I remember um, Robert Frost's definition of poetry is a momentary stay against confusion. And I would say that that's what this project may be served for some of the people. And since I like being involved in something poetic at all times, I hope that there is that aspect to this whole exhibition and, and work. These are different verses to a larger poem, all these tags. What is expressed there? Kip, you, you often talk about the idea of, of pieces being fragments and needing many to make one. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes through again and again in your exhibitions. It's here too, if you, if you could talk about that for a minute. In the individual necklaces, they're made up of many parts, obviously, and some quite distinct from each other. So there is the fragment, and then, and then the exhibition itself is made up of the parts from these different people, including me also. But I, I really, now in the last years prefer to do exhibitions because that way I see the pieces I make as fragments of a larger whole. So it takes many pieces to make one piece. So for me, the, the exhibition as this project is my piece. But in this case, it's made up of many other people's pieces too. And that you can experience the tags one at a time in detail, what they show, or they become something else as a whole and as jewelry. And I'm more interested in what jewelry can serve to, to the larger community. And the tags really work toward that end to show us that jewelry can counter, you know, this kind of work could maybe counter many assumptions about jewelry of its function in the culture. And I am interested in its function in the wider sense of, of the culture not only as jewelry, but as art, and that art matters to, to our health, really, now. And it is the humanity of jewelry that I want to tap into and hope might happen with this project. Well, I think you always, you, you continue to do that with every project you do. And I think you mentioned that quote from, the, um, who was it, Buddy? Um, oh, Baby Dobbs. Well, Baby of course. Dobbs. I can see you in that. Can you, maybe you can just mention that and be well, good. I, I mean, of course, a lot of my work has been in the advocacy of jewelry and jewelry as art. And <clears throat> actually I learned this quote from Lee Friedlander who, who quoted it to me. Baby Dobbs was a jazz drummer and someone asked him how he, he always managed to bring out the best in the people that he played with. And he, he just answered, I play for the benefit of the band. And I do think that's been a lot of my role in, in jewelry, at least I hope so. Well, I, you know, we're, we only have a few minutes left, left Kif, that um, 
I just want to say that is has been an amazing role that you've played in this community. And this is a terrific project. Uh, thank you, Patty. Thank you to New York City Jewelry Week for the opportunity. And again, we're encouraging everyone to see the show um, on the exhibition page and get to know some of the artists. I think that, you know, that, that Kip was showing, Curtis Steiner, Terry Terrell, there's 24 incredible artists um, in the book. Um, we're gonna continue, Taggart is running through New York City Jewelry Week, but it will also continue through the end of the year on our own websites, uh, Gallery Loop and at the Jewelry Library. We'll be having some additional programming virtual programming with many of the artists planned for December. And as Kif said, um, this is an ongoing project and she is developing, excuse me, developing it into a book. Um, and so we look forward to seeing how Oop. this really Maybe that's the end. I think that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I don't know if there are any Again. questions or Alex. Oh, hey. <laughs> Sorry, I think uh, I think Karen is frozen. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> um, that oh, here I am. Oh, oh good. <laughs> okay. Um, we are one minute away. So Karen, if you want to just finish what it was that you were saying. <laughs> no, I just, I just was thanking everyone, especially Kif, because um, I think, you know, we're just honored to work on this project and uh, to be here uh, to show everyone. So thank you, Alex, JB, you, Bella. Yes, thank you for all you've done to put all this together. Impressive. Thank you.